Welcome back to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today is Monday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Alexio Divina, our divine reading, is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. Let us begin our divine reading with an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. According to St. Matthew, today's Gospel reading tells the story of a young man who did not have that simple trust in the child Jesus spoke about in the immediately preceding passage. He was apparently a good man, an unusually good man. He asks Jesus what he must do to have eternal life. However, he seemed to be operating out of the legalistic mind, emphasizing external actions. But Jesus, what we are is more important than what we do. Why do you ask me what is good, Jesus asks him. There is one alone who is good. The man is then told, if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And Jesus mentions just four of the commandments, all touching on relationships with other people. And then he adds, love your neighbor as yourself, as one of those commandments. The man is not satisfied. He replies to Jesus, I have kept all these. What more do I need to do? Jesus tells him that if he wants to be perfect, he should sell off everything he has, give it to the poor, and become a disciple of Jesus. Obviously, the man wasn't expecting this. He was very rich, and although he wanted to serve God, He wasn't prepared to separate himself from the security of his wealth. And and so he walked away from Jesus, full of sadness. You know, to be rich is not just to have a lot of money. It is to have a lot more money than others, especially more money than one needs in a world where there are people who do not have a lot enough for a life of dignity, who have no home, 
who have no food, no place to rest. Wealth is very relative. A person close to poverty line in Europe could be seen as very rich in a remote African or Asian village. So as long as the young man had to cling to his money, he could not, as he claimed to be doing, love his neighbor as himself. Clearly, he was not yet ready for an unconditional following of Jesus. How many of us are? He was not able to follow the example of Peter and Andrew, James and John, who left their boats, nets, and their families to go and to put all of their security on the line for Jesus' sake for the sake of the gospel. Yet before we think this gospel does not particularly concern us because we don't see ourselves as numbered among the rich, we should listen to what Jesus is really saying. For the young man, it was his money he couldn't part with. Hmm. And if we are honest, Most of us must admit that we all have some things we would be very slow to let go of. Addictions of one sort or another, to one degree or another. Things that we would not like God to ask us to give up. Today it might be a good exercise for us to ask ourselves, What would be the most difficult thing for me to give up if Jesus asked me to do so? Something to ponder. As usual, after our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage again. Contemplate its message and concentrate on a thought that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. This can be either through a verse or even just a small word from the scripture passage. Then ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you. More importantly, how you may spiritually grow in imitation of Jesus, fulfilling the will of our Heavenly Father. Let us complete a divine reading now with a closing prayer, and let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. For even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in always. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, if you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, please click the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And, you know, click on that notification button, the bell icon, so you don't miss the new meditations that come to you each and every day. Please help support our channel by sharing these links with others. Pass them along to your friends and relatives as well even to those who otherwise might not be interested and might do them some good. Well, God bless you all. Have a great day. And join us again tomorrow for another Lexio Divina, a divine reading of God's sacred word. Pax et bonum omnibus. Peace and blessings to all. Shalom, shalom.